Hello, my name is Ghazi Belam with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I'm going to talk today about bias configuration through Redfish. I will assume that everyone watching this video know what bias and bias setup are. Redfish give us a scriptable and standardized way to configure bias settings. Bias can be implemented as an external Redfish provider that interacts with the Redfish service to contribute to resources and react to changes done to itself. This is the Redfish model, and as you can see, BIOS sits on the computer system along with boot, memory, processor, secure boot, and other system configuration. I want to clarify some terms first. The schema is a data model. It defines the relationship between objects and the system. It is the data definition, such description, name, format, length, and range. Registries are used in Redfish to optimize data being transferred from a Redfish service. In the case of BIOS, we have a BIOS schema that has the different object and blocks related to the bias resource, such as the attribute object, then we would have a registry that will assist in describing every setting in the attribute object, the dependency between those attributes and the menu where they belong. Redfish service is any product that implements the Redfish specification. For example, if a Redfish service receives an HTTP request, it will return an HTTP response that contains information about the requested resource. A closer look to bias resource, we can see that it will have a current setting resource and a pending setting resource, and here we will be applying all the changes needed. We'll also have OEM and feature resources then under service root, there is registries collection and JSON schema collection. And under these two collection, you will find the bias schema and or the attribute registry. This is an example of a bias resource. And I will go through a few of those fields. Here we have the OData type which specify the schema and version. And this is the attribute registry, which give us the name and the version of the registry. Using this too, we can go to the collections, the registry collection or the schema collection, and we could get the schema and the registry and of this resource. This is the attributes objects which hold all the bias settings and it's a key value pair. This is the OData ID, which is URI of the resource. It's like self pointer. Here we have the Redfish settings object. This is an annotation that tell the client this resource is not writable. If it is found, then the client can make requests to change by a setting by mo modifying the resource identify by the set an object. This array, the messages array, it specifies a message returned by the Redfish service. So for example, if you try to change a setting and it fails, you will find the error here. As here, as an example, the user tried to change boot mode and it tried to change its value to hello. Hello, it's not the appropriate value for boot mode. So we return error saying it is property value not in list. This is the, uh, this points to the resource where changes should be made. And this is the time where setting where applies. The uh, action objects contain the list of supported actions. In Redfish, we have actions they are operations that do not easily map to RESTful interface semantics. 
these types of, oper of operations may not directly affect properties in the Redfish resource. These two actions, reset bias and change password, are standardized for bias in Redfish, but you can add as many actions as you'd like in the OEM section. The links property represent the hyperlinks associated with the resource as defined by that resource schema definition. Then we'll, inside the links, we have another object called OEM. It's where OEMs and other third parties can extend the Redfish data model by creating new resource types. The information and semantics of the OEM resources are not defined in the Redfish standards, but the schema representation, representing the data and the resource itself should conform to the specification. The bias resource have two states, the current settings and the pending settings. As the name apply, the current settings are the actual values of the system configuration. The pending settings resource is the resource where you do the configuration changes through a patch. For example, here, Let's say we're trying to change the admin name to, uh, from Fox to Dana. This is the URI for uh, the pending settings, bias slash settings. We do a patch that has admin name equal Dana. Now, before we reboot the system, let's do a get on bias. It will return the whole payload, but if we look closely to admin name, we will see it says fox then we do a get and bias slash settings admin name will find that it's dana because this is a future setting it's a pending setting it hasn't been applied yet now after we reboot the system these they will be the same if the change was successful they will be dana if the change for some reason failed it will be fox here we have a python script to get the value of boot mode. Python has libraries that handle the JSON data and do HTTP requests. First, we initialize our variables such as username, password, the host IP address, and the system URI. We do an HTTP GET request with the URI of our BIOS resource and the authentication. Once we get the raw data, we load it into a dictionary. Then we index the dictionary with attributes and boot mode. And we do that because the all the settings and bias resource reside in the attributes object. So once we index the attributes, we index with the settings, we want the value for, and we print it. And in this case, it's UFI. This is the layout of the bias attribute registry. This is the OData type, which tells us the uh, type of this resource, uh, of this um, metadata. It's an attribute registry. Then we have the registries entries object with the attributes array, dependencies array, and menus array. To the right, we have an example of a dependency object, which will be under dependencies array along with many other objects. Um, this is an example of dependencies for boot mode. The way we read this was if the boot mode current value is equal to legacy bias, then the option UFI optimized boot should be disabled. Here on the left, we have an example of an attribute object every attribute will have an object like this to give us all the information needed to configure the setting and validate a change. For example, here we have the attribute name. And this is the restful name. And here we have the display name, which we see under the uh, setup menu. Here we'll say whether it's read only or not. This is the menu path where it sits in the setup menu. And these are the different 
option that it can uh, the different values that he can hold. On the right is an example of a menu object in the menu arrays. So here the menu name is serial port options and it sits under the system option menu. There are many tools in different coding languages and several RESTful interfaces that can be used to configure a system through Redfish. In this case, I'm using a curl, curl to change the admin name. Here I have my JSON file where I have a JSON object with attributes and it has the admin name with the new name because this is the way it looks under the bias resource. Now I use my curl command. I tell it that the type is JSON. The content type is JSON. Also tell that I want to do a patch. Then I give it the file, which is this file, the URI of my pending settings, and the username and password. This command should change the admin name property to new name. This is an example of how to use actions in BIOS. We talked earlier about the reset BIOS action, which is a standard action under BIOS resource. Usually BIOS are, uh, actions are done through posts. Here I have the one of the parameters of the only actually parameter of reset BIOS, it's reset type. Every action will have the allowable values so we know here that this is default. You could also be user default. Then we use the same command curl that we used before. The only difference is a different file. And the post instead of a patch. And this is the target of the action. And the authentication. This action will restore all the bias system settings to default. Thank you for watching, and if you need more information, you can find it, find it in those links.